this presentation uh, is about uh, simplex, so simplices, and uh, because then uh, we may make a connection uh, between uh, quasi-crystals, uh, number theory, and uh, category theory. And uh, so for category theory, it will be uh, more Marnie <laughs> who will <laughs> bring knowledge. But we are working with the same simplex, so I wanted to show you how this is connecting to quasi-crystal in a relatively fundamental way. And uh, they could even be thought as uh, bricks for quasi-crystals. It's an extension of what we have discovered as the beauty of the golden uh, tetrahedron, but here it's more. So I will cover these different points. Simple introduction, uh, what are the simplex from graph to rings? And uh, some example of golden and also silver simplices in 1D, 2D, and 3D. Then in 3D we have a surprise and uh, we begin a classification. Then I give a rigorous mathematical definition. But first I prefer to give some examples. And from the definition we can make a canonical exploration in 3D, in 4D, and apply two examples, the QSN and the D6QC in 3D, the E8 Elzerson quasi-crystal in 4D. And uh, after that, we can try to do something with these uh, simplices uh, to identify loops in the tiles and quantum group uh, to compute uh, pass integral and some amplitude using uh, loop quantum gravity. Um, this is uh, a work that I began with uh, Marcello. Uh, I will show what are the code theoretic choices and eventually amplitudes. Uh, which we can deduce from these simplices. And if I have time, I will show uh, just a, a small uh, spectral analysis of the AB equals P. So in graph theory, a simplex, this is just a complex graph, a complete graph. So all the vertex, each are linked to all the other, but there is no notion of distance. In geometry, then we have the notion of distance, so there are polytops which are totally connected also. Each vertex is connected by an edge to each of the other. And uh, if all edges have the same length, one, it's a regular simplex. Uh, and then we will uh, see if uh, the edge could only take two different distances, one and the other which is phi, so the golden ratio times the first. And then I name these golden simplices. We can also do discrete geometry. So here we suppose that our geometry is in a continuous Euclidean space. But we like to work with discrete space. So instead of the real number r, we will take quadratic integer, integer in a ring. And uh, so it's a ring of integers of uh, Galois extension of uh, the square root of some integer number, but we will work with square root of five, which is also named Z of phi. Uh, it's a set of A plus B phi, where phi is a golden ratio, and A and B are integer. And I name this the Dirichlet coordinate, D. Uh, coordinates because uh, uh, then I can work in vectorial space where uh, each coordinate takes the value in this uh, Dirichlet uh, uh, integer set. And this is interesting because, for example, this is a Euclidean domain, so we have uh, a specific norm, which ca which, uh, we can have prime numbers, we can have uh, unique factorization, uh, uh, so this is very rich. And then one thing to add, mm? <coughs> just one thing to add is that when you have a, a quasi-crystal space made of tetrahedra or other objects, then the, all of the legal permutations on that, to me, should be thought of graph theoretically, and the technical term is graph drawing. It's not, not my term, but mm -hmm. so the, where, where <clears throat> for example, 
the way graph theorists typically represent the complete and undirected graph of, say, three objects is typically as an equilateral triangle. So you can, that you can practice every single aspect and axiom of graph theory in a geometric space which is the graph drawing space, but you're still doing graph theory. So it seems mm -hmm. that all of the yes. connection possibilities of turning connections between the invisible points of a possibility space for a QC on and off and making the connections on and off, you draw different legal inflations. So that's why I always like to encourage us to realize that quasi-crystal codes, all the legal inflations, are really graph theory, graph drawing theory. Yes, yes. We are both working with graph theory and geometry by embedding the graph with coordinates yeah. in, a, in a geometrical space, which is restricted to uh, Dirichlet space, so it's not a continuous space. Right. Uh, so, that the mag so that the magnitudes of our connections in graph theory simply, we label the magnitudes as vectors with direction and length, right? Yes, and then because this is a ring, we know that uh, all the square of the lens uh, will be in this ring, will be directly integer, uh, which is very practical for all the computation and which emerge naturally from all the interesting quasi-crystal with five-fold symmetry. They can all fit in this framework. You said the squares, the squares, uh, the, the sum of squares will the be The square of the lens will be of the sum of, and the sum of the squares of the lengths. Also will, the sum of the square an, and, the an, and the square, yes. Will be an integer. Yes, but yeah. the length itself is not a, an integer, not necessarily. Right, so I summed, I took the seven um, lengths of the E8 root vector contractions last night and I was curious what they summed to. And uh, so they summed to 5.5, mm -hmm. but that's, that's without waiting. So I have to take, e because each of the E8, each of the seven is in a different frequency of occurrence in the E8 to 3D projection. Ah, yes. And so if I take the weighted, wait, yeah, if yes. I take the weighted mm -hmm. um, sum of squares, then I'll probably come up with just an integer. But... Yes, but... Um, you should be, because that's a regular in AD. Right. Yes, anyway, the... the average, weighted average of the sum of squares should also be an integer. Oh, that's, I'm sorry, that's what I meant. Mm. If I didn't oh, say okay. sum of squares, I meant the mm. sum, I, I squared and summed the seven fundamental edge lengths, and the sum of those squares is 5.5. .5. Yes. Yeah, and, mm. and so, but that's not as interesting as the more meaningful number, which is the weighted average, where we take the frequency of occurrence of each of those E8 contractions because they're not equal mm. so I just need those frequencies then I'll sum and square well, them it's 8 over 3 right so the ratio of the sum of the sum of the square would be 8 over 3 like for example if you have a, oh following the sum of squares law yeah right 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 so that's what we can predict it should be <laughs> yeah. if it's a law it better be that mm. so there are some uh, simplex <laughs> In 1D, this is just the segment from the Fibonacci chain. One and uh, so in Dirichlet, Dirichlet coordinate, it's one and phi. I always represent the phi, the long, the long one, uh, in yellow, so it's easy to see. And the definition is that uh, the large over the short. So the golden ratio is a positive solution of x2 equals x plus 1. Then with this golden segment, we can build four possible golden triangles. And uh, here, oh, this is an also the number of short edge, and this is the number of long edge. So I have three blue short edge, three and zero other, two blue, one, one and two. Two golden. Because really the two on the ends are not really golden. Uh, In a way they are if you relate their ratios, but uh, they're, no, the two on, yeah, I'm just saying the, 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 the one on the left and uh, right, they're, the not, they're not really golden. Those middle ones are golden. It's, it's yeah. yellow more. But they're, yeah, they're golden if you relate them. 
So, but we say maybe, uh, maybe we really like the golden ratio, but the silver ratio or other algebraic number could also be used. This is quite a good question from a mathematician. Okay, so I will not eliminate this question <laughs> immediately. Le, let's look at the next ratio, silver ratio. It's this equation with two instead of one. And then you see that uh, so this is more than two. The, then the golden, the silver, in fact, part is two comma something. Uh, in fact, two comma forty one. We can use the same notation, but then because this one is more than two times the small, one of the triangle disappeared. Mm -hmm. This one is no more possible because when the big the large is more than two times this one. The triangle cannot close. That's interesting. So yeah. <laughs> so are we, are we, can we, sorry, can we um, relate spin like we were doing yesterday to the silver pictures as well? Are you killing? Oh, the silver picture? Yeah, yesterday we were labeling, using the four spins to label the four cases. The four spin, yes, but the four spin are, are for the golden ratio. Okay, so, so what do we have here as an analogy? is uh, if I use another uh, algebraic number, because a priori any algebraic number could give interesting quasi-crystal. But we see that here it will be less interesting because we have one uh, triangle disappear. And uh, I can take this for any n, and after that it will be worse, in fact. <laughs> so, and we will see that this is very important, the force triangle is very important because then we will have a family of simplex but with only three it will be very restricted. So can you go back to the previous image? So it seems that at the end of the day this unique quality for this ratio is because it because it's really the only ratio that has the the fractal self-identical quality that it has where the long to the short is the same yes, as the yes. long to the short plus the long mm. the long and any other ratio no other ratio has that quality, so you should expect something very special, right? Like yes, this. but I wanted to check no, no, because yeah. uh, mathematically, I only use the algebraic properties oh, that the yeah. other algebraic number also mm -hmm. have. But I see that all immediately geometrically there is, there is a difference because, in fact, this is the only metallic ratio which is smaller than two, and then with this triangle is disappearing for all the other. Uh, I watched one video on YouTube this week where people generalize all properties of golden ratio to the so Yes, but you see that uh, <laughs> for the quasi-crystal, <laughs> immediately you see that some property will be very less rich for, the, for all the others and for the golden ratio, and we see why. There's one property you can't generalize, which is the fractal self-identical quality. That that's unique to the golden ratio in the universe of all ratios. And it's not only about the golden ratio and silver ratio. Also, if I take other uh, algebraic numbers, um, so Galois extension of square root of three, for example, uh, it's also less interesting. But square root of three maybe has a more triangle. You didn't check that one. Um, no. Uh, it should, yes, I'm sure square root of 3 is more interesting because it's uh, less than 2. But after that, all the other, like uh, square root of 11, square root of 17, square root of 13, they are not interesting. So maybe there is a hope with square root of 3. <laughs> but we will go back to the golden ratio, and then we see the golden tetraedra. And uh, Naturally, for the silver, there is, there is very less. So let's see this eight golden tetraedra. It's just clear. So uh, the notation is uh, the six small, zero large. So for example, this one has one blue small, five golden. Uh, so this is quite obvious. This is a orthographic projection. And uh, this is a perspective one. So we have, uh, oh, <coughs> so you have, you have seven shapes. Yes, seven shapes. 
an eight. They are all golden tetrahedra, but uh, this one are not really golden. They are uh, regular. Two regular and six, which are really golden. And uh, for example, the D6 quasi crystal is made only on this six golden, but without any regular. But we may, in the general case, be interested in all of this. And this is the surprise, is that even in 3D, we also have golden five simplices. So they are, uh, so they are in di dimension uh, five. They have six points, but five of them are in a plane. So this is a degenerated uh, five simplices, which is degenerated to three dimension. This one, it's just the, the pyramid, easy to see, and this one. But they are simplex because each, uh, uh, each vertex is linked to all the other by edges, which are only one or the golden ratio. And that's the reason why they emerge also in quasi-crystal, these shapes which are not tetrahedron, but that we can decompose in tetrahedron. Hmm. So and so we have uh, two other. Uh, this is just uh, like the, the, the hat of an icosahedron. You have uh, three small triangles and one uh, large triangle in the opposite side, which is linked to these three vertices. And also we have three diagonal, which are edges hidden inside of the shapes. So this, this edge, for example, is it's not outside, it's inside of the volume. Also this one and this one. So they are hidden. And this, this is just a um, um, prism, a prism made of a golden tetrahedron and a non-golden tetrahedron. And they are linked together by, um, by three uh, lengths, which are uh, non-golden. Uh, so, uh, just maybe I will do this. So, I have one uh, non golden lens one, one golden, it's a side of the prism. And then the only possible choice is to have this golden, this golden, long, this short, and this short. So in this case, I have a degenerated square, but which is a, a golden simplex. It's so not a square, it's a trapezoid? Uh, yes, trapezoid. I've been seeing these shapes a lot. Yes, <laughs> yeah. that's right. <why. laughs> <laughs> now we know why. <laughs> uh -huh. So. This, this five, uh, so the pentagon and this trapezoid, they are imagined because they are simplex, but degenerated as a face. Mm -hmm. But in fact, this is a four simplex. The other is a five simplex. What does the 10 five represent? Oh, uh, I have 10 short edge, okay. the blue one, five outside and five here, and five uh, yellow. Okay. And here I have five blue and 10 yellow. Did you do this exercise with the pentacoron, the four simplex? Yeah. Um, the yes, yes, after, yes, for, uh, for four dimension. I made this. I will show you after. So you see that we have four, five simplices, but which emerge in 3D. So that's an interesting surprise. Then we can decompose them into four simplices by removing one here one of the vertex, this one. And then I got here a 7-3 uh, four simplex. And here I have a 5-1 tetrahedron, golden tetrahedron that I removed. In this case, uh, I removed a 2-4 because you have two blue and four yellow, uh, 
tetrahedron. And what is remaining is a four simplex, which is a three blue and seven yellow. And then, so the seven three here, I can again remove one uh, vertex, this one, which was there. And then I get this. Um, no, this, this, so this is this one. Yeah. This is the result. Uh, no. Uh, Ray, this is a projection, right? Up the two images on the t upper left are projections, right? Projections of a five, s of a, of a five simplex. So, no, I was asking if you took the four mm -hmm. simplex and projected it and did yeah, this exercise. This, that is, this was a, four, a five simplex, but then I, I show that I remove this to get a four simplex no, here. No, no, no. What I meant was projecting the four simplex because by removing a vertex from the projection to 3D, you don't, you don't create a projection of a four simplex. Because the four simplex is the equidistant array of four points in in not equidistant in, uh, of five is five golden points. simplexes. Hmm? No regular. It's a complete graph. Right, that's what I'm just trying to clarify. In other words, mm -hmm. these two yeah. images on the up these are projections of a five simplex to three D, correct? Yes. And then what you're saying is you're just saying topologically by removing a vertex you get you get a distorted uh, four simplex. I, I agree. No, 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 it's not. No? It's distorted. like a removal of one vertex from a tetrahedron, you get an equilateral triangle. By removing one vertex, you just lower the one dimension. Mm, so okay, yeah. Yeah. So, right, yeah, right, we're, right, right, right. So yeah. I see uh, that. We're, if we're trying to figure out like four simplices, right? And we already have a five simplex, and we just take a subset and we know. We, yeah, we no. have an example of a four simplex. Yeah, it's so totally so obvious. I just missed that. that. So because you, if you, if you take away one vertex from a six simplex you have a four you have a four simplex exactly five i mean a, f a five simplex <laughs> if you take one from a five you have a four mm -hmm. right right of course so but i can also um Uh, maybe yes no yes I know what I was lost so for this it's clear what I get a 7-3 for simplex a 3-7 now for the other one for this one for example I want also to remove a vertex to get a four simplex. I will remove this one and it will automatically remove the edge which is connected. And then at the end, what I get is the same 730 four simplex that I get from, from this one, from this five simplex by removing this. So it's not something new. But if instead I remove this one, then I get this one, which is a different uh, five simplex. It's a, a four simplex. Uh, it's a five five. I have five uh, blue and five yellow. Um, then I make the work from this one here. If I remove one, I get the same three seven, three like this. In fact. If you rotate it, this one is the same that I got from here. And if I remove the other point, other type of point, then I get a 5-5, five five, which is the same than this one. So from my four five simplices, I can get four different four simplices. The seven three, no, sorry, uh, three different. The 7, 3, the 3, 7, and the 5, 5. So then my conclusion for the classification of the possible uh, golden tile in 3D 
I have um, six golden for simplices plus the two one which are not really golden but they included here so regular one three different golden four simplices and four golden five simplices and you see that naturally when I add the number of long and short I, I get uh, n and plus one divided by two the number of connection 15 10 6. Can you go back to the previous slide? So it's kind of like imagine if you took an infinite lattice of those five and six simplexes and then you took a slice of that and then projected it relative to these six angles that you have here mm -hmm. then you would create a, you would create some that are quasi crystal because obviously those ones are quasi would be quasi crystal in the infinite you know three space and maybe maybe these would be crystalline projections oh because the quasi crystal projections are going to maybe we can have this one also in quasi crystal it's right because the quasi crystalline projections are going to have a high, higher average valence rank right than the crystalline projections so it looks it kind of reminds mm -hmm. me but of they are all equivalent for this but they're they different. Are simplex Oh yeah. Well, uh, uh, just what is different is that here you have one face which is degenerated, and this one has three faces which are degenerated. Those those are not meant to convey superposition of edges and vertices. The two on the right. I mean, I don't understand the diagram fully as much as the left diagrams. Uh, like, it's why, um, why do you have the you have the blue line very close to the yellow lines? I but think it's not a, a straight on look at a prism. Uh, it's hard for me to read also. W what's the meaning of that diagram, Ray, so where you don't this, have... This point is this one. Mm -hmm. This no. is the same diagram. Uh, no. but here well, what does that shape look it like? Comes from trying to uh, figure out. Uh, this shape comes from this shape by removing one uh, No, what, uh, what I'm asking here. is, um, go back to the previous image. So on the bottom right, Yes. so you see how you have the, the blue and the yellow almost on top of each other? Just pick any blue. Here? Yeah, so you have a blue bar, a blue line, yes. almost on top of a yellow line. Y yes, I have a two. So it's almost on top of the yellow, but why did you draw it they're, almost? They're all uh, intersecting, in fact. The two yellow and the two blue are, are joining are, are, together. Are th is this? Why, why do you have to draw is, that, is that this, way, I guess? Is this? coincident with this no. in the no. projective space so no. they're just off so you have some some just kind of arbitrary angle or whatever that well, those two are identical yes right? they are identical it's just the projection which is different so oh. why why did you why did you rotate it that way is there because a, uh, to show that this one is coming from this one are these orthographic projections yes um, no, uh, this one are orthographic projection made by computers. This one are made by hand, so the kind of projection. Because if it was orthographic, <laughs> wouldn't those lines superimpose the blue and the yellow? The well, the things that the well, this blue is and yellow a, are different edges. A then, drawing of a prism. So they can't be. Even if it's also a graphical projection, it's not projection. It, the the angle is not like right. Like mm -hmm. a perpendicular to and the because it's perpendicular to <laughs> an equilateral triangle facet of this higher dimensional Only shape. Only one one of them, but it's because it's a five D, you know. Uh -huh. So okay, okay. So now we kind of masterize this uh, golden simplicis uh, in the small uh, dimension. Are they 3-3 uh, three, three back there? Uh, are those different? For the 4, three, three. go back one. You have 3-3 three, three listed twice on the 4 symbol. Yes, yeah, there are two different ones, yes. Different ways of constructing them. They were... Uh, the bigger one, the small uh -huh. one. Uh, this one oh, yeah. and this one. Um, maybe, yes, if I remember when. Well. 
Yes, maybe, maybe this one also, there is two possibilities, in fact. I, I've not drawn everything. There is a second 2-4 where the, the two blue are not touching, and the same uh, here. There is a second 4-2 where the two yellow are not touching, where they are opposite. The classification was made by okay. the number of long and, and short, but in fact, with the same longer, you, you can have different uh, shapes. Okay. You can have also two shapes for this one, two shapes for this one. Okay. So here we can really mathematically define the golden simplex, a polytope satisfying this condition in the right orientation, all the coordinates are Dirichlet integer, and every pair of vertex uh, is distant by a length which is either small or large when the ratio of them is the golden ratio. So this is the English definition, and we can have a Bourbaki style definition here, uh, which is in fact more useful to compute the things. <laughs> the computer prefers this one. <laughs> I can guarantee you, even if you don't like it. <laughs> Do you want me to read this or not? <laughs> Uh, okay, so there exist P and Q two uh, integer, positive or negative, such that for each i, which is an a natural number between one and chi minus one. Um, what is k? K is the dimension of the integer vectors. such that for all j uh, bigger than k, uh, so j, no, j big, bigger than i, becomes with i plus one, but until k. So this is just to make a triangle to test all the possibilities of different combination of i and j where they are different. Then the sum from the index mu equals i to n which is the index of the dimension. This expression, which is uh, a, a mu j minus a mu i, so it's the a coordinate of the, of the Dirichlet integer of the mu dimension of the gis uh, vectors, plus the same with the b, multiplied by phi, all squared, which is in fact the, the square norm of the of these vectors belong to p plus q q phi or p plus q plus p plus two q phi, saying that this is a Dirichlet integer p q or the same multiplied by phi phi square. So uh, the square norm should be in a either one that I fix, because there should exist this, P and Q, or the same times phi. The phi, phi two the square norm and phi the norm. And then from this I can um, compute condition and apply them to the, all my set of coordinates if I have a good set of coordinates. And this is what we will see here. Now we can make a canonical exploration. So I will, uh, because um, I will explore all the coordinates in a shell, which is the first shell of, uh, it's a distance two. Um, here I am in 3D, but it's a, I'm coming with a shell in 6D, so, and uh, with, with all, uh, all the integers. So this is uh, the sphere in 6D, which of a square norm four. And the shell two is the same of square norm uh, four phi two. And so there is a, a finite number of this vertex, the intersection of a grid uh, and a shell, which is given by a formula in number theory. And then I check for all these numbers 
if my formula given there is satisfied. And I have 44, 54 which are OK on the shell 1 and 54 on the shell 2. So this is saying that um, if I want to explore um, uh, simplices uh, golden um, golden simplices in 3D uh, where one uh, vertex is in the center I can only have uh, a combination of point uh, of any point from the 108 vertices which are here and then I can check for all the possible combination if they are uh, uh, at the right distance and then they will make only uh, 960 different edges, which will be one or the golden ratio. In fact, two or two times the golden ratio. And from this, I will get uh, 320 golden three simplices of the sort 3-3. Three, three. So 160 of each, so they are different. And I also can get uh, 768 uh, five simplices, which are of these types, 10, 5, 5, 10, or 9, 6, 6, 9. And each of this one, I have 144 different. So this is the same, but modulo the rotation and, and symmetry. And from this 768, I can generate sub-simplexes of this one, uh, 1,924 simplices, and the same number of three simplices, which are this one. So these are all the possible golden simplices in 3D uh, where one vertex is fixed, and there is no other. So let me get this right. Um, you started with like one vertex at the center and then went to a, sh a shell, two shells. Then, yes, then one I'm, I'm using out. two shells because one two units out because one the distance from the center to each point of this shell should be either the long or the short. Right. That's why I have two shells. And then I make all the combinations. Then I identify that on these two shells, I have only these vertices which are satisfying my relation even at the slide before. That was for the Dirichlet images? You're intersecting yes. with the grid of Dirichlet. Uh -huh. Got you. And then I can make the all the combination of this. In fact, I, I generate the, the edges, nine, uh, these edges between uh, these sets of vertices and the centers. Uh, no, not the center, so without the center. And, um, and I trace a graph of this. And then from the graph, I'm using graph theoretic uh, research of simplex in the graph. And then that it's very fast to find this uh, high dimensional simplex in the graph. But because all the edge are golden, I know that this is a golden simplex. And it's, um, um, I believe the, the algorithm is given after. Uh, in the next slides. So I made the classification of 3D, and this is what we see, in fact. These are uh, the, uh, the 320 golden three simplices, which are not uh, sub-simplices of, of the five simplices. And if I add also the one which are this one, then I get this. And this is a graph of the edges. Yes, so this is detailing a little the computations that I made. It's more concrete. So for example, in Z6 at radius 2, I have 252 vertices. And uh, so the same for the ra this radius uh, to phi. But only 54 of them 
are in the shell one. And these are the coordinates. So you see that the coordinates they only have, and from this coordinate, it's easy to see that, to check that the, you have only four points, which are one. So that's why the square radius is two, is, is four. So the, the radius is two, so four, or one, which is two. Then I have permutation, but in Z6, I will have this one, but because I want them to be also in a shell in three dimension, I have a, a, another restriction which applied and I eliminate some of them. So these are the ones which are both in the sphere in three dimension and the sphere in six dimension, like the presentation I made uh, some months ago on this, to, on the shelling. Then I do what is new, I do also the same stuff with uh, the next shell, to phi. So you see that here this is not changing in, um, uh, in 6D, I still have uh, 4 as a sum because I'm still on the same shell in uh, 6D. But I'm on a different shell in 3D. Yes, because one shell in 6D can give several shell in 3D. So I take one shell in 6D, so I'm sure to have everything. And then I select with my rules the one which are in the, the first shell in, in 3D and the second shell in 3D, which has the right distance from the center. This is restricted. And from this, I compute the possible edge of. And these are the indices, so 1 and 6, for example, the first and the sixth. Yeah. And then from the edge, I can uh, compute a graph. And I don't have to make a lot of computation. It's very fast and efficient. It's so fast and efficient that I can do this in 4D also. <laughs> but here, you see, I have more. Uh, in ZC, Z8, so in the shell of Z8, I have uh, now uh, uh, 100, uh, 1,136 uh, vertices. And uh, I select only 216, which in 4D are at the radius 2, and the same number uh, at the radius 2 phi. So I don't list all of them, uh, but you see, and um, it's quite the same. So here, uh, here also, the, the sum is 4. So you can also have a coordinate which is 2, but you have 4 coordinates to each point because we are in 4D. And from this and this, I compute uh, something like 13,000 edges. And I have the result. I get some maximal golden eight simplices. So uh, it's maximal because they are simplices which are not part of a bigger simplices, simplex. So the maximal, there are eight simplices, and uh, I can find, uh, uh, yes, something like uh, 30,000 of them. And they are just of uh, these two kind of type, 36,036. So the, this one are regular, regular simplices. And, uh, uh, and here there should be an error. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. <laughs> it's not this one. Because the sum should be 36. And um, yes, I had no time to copy all the results here. Yes, in fact, yes, I did. Not all the detail is uh, copied because here, here this, is, this is good. Then what I got, I got uh, maximal eight simplices and maximal seven simplices, which is kind of remaining E8. But here I'm coming from Z8, but uh, it's kind of same lattices, a big number. And then uh, I have all other seven simplices. Um, in fact, for 
each of the eight simplex, I, I can make eight different seven simplex just by removing one of the vertex. So from this 34,000, I get eight times 34,000, seven simplex, plus this one. And because these seven simplices are maximal, it says that they are not belonging to an eight simplices, so they are not the same than the other that I get from this. So I can add. Otherwise, in sometimes it could uh, give the same, but here it cannot. So I have this, uh, a total of seven simplices, which is something like uh, 400,000. Uh, and then from these 400,000 seven simplices, I make the same process. I remove uh, each time one vertex, and I get six simplices. But I have to check that I have no double, because I can get, for example, the, se the same six simplices from 1.7, which is in this family, and from 1.7, which is here. But it's, that's why I don't multiply this by six. In fact, I multiply this by six, and then I take the union of all the different, and I get only this. So this number are quite complicated to compute uh, in number theory, uh, even if they can. But I, uh, the computer can do this. And then I make the descent from 6 to 5, and to 4, and to 3, because um, uh, I don't have other maximal golden maximal simplices of smaller dimension. And I don't have also other of higher dimension. So I'm sure that this is all the classification. And what I'm interested in is what I get at the end, essentially, as four simplices. And what are their faces, which are three simplices, the tetrahedron. So I cannot have something else than this object in my Elzerson quasi-crystal or in a four-dimensional quasi-crystal. Right. You said you mentioned Z8, right? Yes, yeah, Z8. Whoa. How? Oh. I don't understand how. Because I'm taking a shell of Z8. Yeah. There, there are no simplices in Z8, and so it doesn't project to any simplices. But Z8 includes all the point of E8. It, it's just it bigger. I have more points. I, I don't, I don't think so. I think you can generate E8 with some copies of Z8, but I don't no. think Z8 contains the point set E8. Because I take E8 and I multiply all the coordinates by two, so I have just a subset of integer coordinates which are all in Z8. Oh, so you generate another point set by multiplying it by two. Yes, because okay. I want directly integer, so I, I, I don't okay. want to work with half integer. So you're okay. So in a way, you're generating you're generating a simplex. So, uh, so A E D are based on simplices, mm -hmm. right? Where Z is not. And so what you did here by by that method is you took you started with with the Z it lattice in eight dimensions, and then and then you basically generated another point set that was offset from the first point set so you generated one of the one of the other lattices associated with simplices um but it, from what you described yeah, it because otherwise z it should have 16 vertices on a shell one so what you're do doing is different than just a z it you did the directly the integer you did two sets it's a two sets of z eight well, you multiply. Say it again. You took Z eight and you multiply. You you multiplied the point set by two. What, what exactly um, did you do? No, if I take the E eight and I multiply the the coordinate by two. Oh, E eight. E eight. It's a subset of Z eight. No, Z eight is a subset of E eight, but not the other way around. No, but I multiply the coordinate by two, then all, oh, all right. the coordinates are integer. Oh, yeah. so, so you multiply, it's integer, you it's multiply the Z8 coordinates by two. I multiply the, the standard E8 coordinate, which yeah, are so half integer. So you make integer. the E8 more sparse. Yes. The Z8 is like a unit length oh. of one. Oh, right, right. Yeah. So you, you decomposed it 
you took your E8 and you decomposed it to get your subspace, which contains Z8. And, but then you can't project Z8 and get simplices. Well, so I'm his, still not understanding. It's not that he's taking the, the Gossip polytope and projecting it down. No, no, the lattice. Yeah. Yeah, so the he's lattice is made of nine, you know, of facet, like you just don't have any 60 degree angles there. You have, you it's know, all, but, um, it's just a, a, a place to harvest your, your Dirichlet coordinates yes, from. He needs, right. Mm. He needs four coordinates in each, uh, t for four space, but he, in each one it wants to express it as a A plus B phi. So you have A and B for the okay. first coordinate and then C and D for the second. Okay. I think I so get you it. You need but like the A, B, and C, and D, and you the bottom line is he didn't just is. project Z8. He did the manipulation. In other words, you didn't do something as simple as projecting no. Z8. Okay. And also that's at radius two because there are some more co combinations. Because if it's the closest, then you get much smaller. Yes, I not at radius one. Yes, I'm yeah. at radius two, and the E8 multiplied by two is also at radius two. So it's mm -hmm. a subset of this one. Okay. And I also take. So this is the radius 2 in Z8, yes. And then from this, I only take the, the points which are belonging to a, a radius 2 sphere in 4D or a radius 2 phi sphere in 4D as the Dirichlet integer coordinate, which is restricting to, to this one. Fon, can, 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 can't you get the A3 as a subset of Z3? Okay, so that, therefore, if you follow that same form, you can get, you can get one of the mm -hmm. simplex-associated lattices as a subset of yeah, because, E8. Yeah, because okay. that ADE, uh, all that it's decorations of the centroids or midpoints. Yeah. And so if you yeah. shrink the Z lattice to be tough, then yeah. you automatically cover those points. Right, or delete a subset of points, you, you mm -hmm. get the same thing, right? Okay, I get it. So this is an example of a projection to 2D, some result. Uh, so this is the algorithm to generate the QSN. Uh, first, we can take 2n plus 1 planes, planes which are Fibonacci spaced by a Fibonacci chain, which is uh, symmetric. Then we select the 120 subsets of three from the 10 planes, the Fibonacci echo grid method. Then we have to solve 120 uh, uh, times 2n plus 1 to the, to the cube because for each combination of planes, uh, intersections. And this is a, a D intersection Diophantine system that I can solve in integer with Dirichlet integer where because the coordinates of the space are expressed in Dirichlet integer and also the coordinates of the planes. So. Can you just really fast define a Diophantine equation? Yes, it's a, an equation where the solution should be integer. Okay. And, uh, and where the coefficients also are just integer. Okay. And uh, then, from all these solutions, I identify the one which has, a, which has the highest ranks. Uh, and automatically, there are the 20 group centers because they have more symmetry than all the others. So I can have a list of 20 group centers without uh, having to compute the edge, for my for example. So this is very fast and efficient. And then I have the choice between two algorithms. Then from the 20 group centers, because I w I'm interested here more in the equivalent uh, quasi-crystal, space filling quasi-crystal, based on the 20 group centers, which should be one because all the coordinates are Dirichlet integers. And uh, so I can find the short and long edge and make the graph and use the algorithm that I made for the before to find all the maximal clicks. Clicks means groups, um, sets, groups, clicks clusters. It's a it's a complete graph, okay. a, a complete subgraph. Okay. So it's a simplex. Uh, okay. Also in this case, uh, in graph theory. And um, uh, or another method, because now I have all the possible tiles, I have computed this, I can just take all the possible tiles centered at one point and translate it and look if the set of points in my subset 
is matching the set of points in my set. And if it is matching, then I have this tile at this point. And this is a very fast algorithm also because it's in n, the number of vertex. It's not in n2, like computation of edge or distance. It's uh, really the best algorithm that we can have. Like the new algorithm to compute the edge is also based on this. And uh, of, yes, the translated canonical simplex types, which are the ones that I computed uh, just uh, to the, at the other slides. Uh, so, so Brie, this method you're talking about, what's the difference from the, my method? Uh, I don't know what is your method to get the tiles. This is your method, this. From here to here, this is your method. This is a Fibonacci icosagrid method. Uh -huh. And here, this is my method to compute the tiles. You mean the tetrahedron? Uh, What's the tile? No, here I am. Uh, no, I'm not computing the tetrahedron here. To compute the tetrahedron, I can also use this method. So what is it this? It is working. But to compute the tetrahedron, I have a problem because first I have to compute all the edge of all the vertex. Uh -huh. And if I have a very big QSN, this is, what, this is the step which is very, in N2 for millions, very, very slow. Right, so what do you mean by the tiles are tetrahedron, right? No, no. Golden, uh, I'm the here, I'm I, I taking only, I'm restricting to the Vertex, oh, so which are generating 20 group centers. Okay. So you're generating... Uh, I take a very subset of the okay, QSN. Two the sets speed. of tetrahedron, like a unit lens and a golden ratio lens. Is this... No. Well, then no, I don't understand your... Here I am computing all the vertex yeah. in the QSN, okay. not the tetrahedron. Then okay. he gets the, the space vertex. filling at the 20 group centroids, and then he gets his canonical golden tetrahedron from that. Oh, okay, okay. I yeah. didn't understand what you're talking about. Okay. But uh, I can also use a similar method like this to compute the edge. This is what I, the only one which is really efficient for very big QSN. Saying that I can have only 30 direction and two, two lengths, so 60 possibilities. It, it's in fact the, the same method, but for one dimensional <laughs> simplex mm. <laughs> that I can use to, to find the edge. And, f and then when I have the edge, I use the graph method to find the tetrahedron, graph theory method. Those so guys. these are the shells, for example. Uh, for example, this is a Dirichlet integer square norm. For four, it's a two phi to the square. And I have 30 of this one. So this is the center uh, uh, icos the dodecahedron. Mm -hmm. And the point R20 group. And then I made, I represent some other, but I, I'm not, uh, I have to work a little more to make a good uh, graphic representation. Looks but like those I are compute the, everything. Look, you see the little Catalan, Catalan numbers there from Marnie's presentation. Yeah, oh, yeah, it looks the mm. uh, same. Yeah, how nice, how, how nice <laughs> That's the That's just the convex as a whole, it would not, <laughs> would only plot that way. And uh, so for the D6, it's the same. So first, the first method is very simple to use. Uh, D6 shells, rotate, cut, and project in direct integer coordinates. And then I can use one of these methods to get the tiles. It works also for E8. Some results for E8. Are, um, so here are the 10 first cells expressed in Dirichlet integer coordinates. And uh, it's interesting to see that they have only integers between minus 5 and 1. And in fact, in the whole E8 quasi crystal, the coordinates are between minus 5 and 5. So, very, very small uh, number. I got, I got lost. Uh, so, you did a D, D6 and you're doing E8 yes. for generating that golden quasi crystal, right? Yes, I mean to, the, to, the to see the, tile, the tiling. From the from the vertex in uh, I need to have the vertex in directly integer coordinates. Right, but I understand D six because we have done the D six. But for mm -hmm. E eight, from E eight across the course, you want to go to forty and do the slice. No, no, like it's a four dimensional. Uh, I get pentacorons. 
Right, but if you do one slice, it kind of give the same thing like the D6 gives. The yes, but now I'm, QC. Uh, I'm not interested in slice now, but when I have the yet, then I can so do you slice easily. So you want a four-dimensional cost equation yes, with the golden four ratio for okay. yes. Just so you know, you can get 3D also. Ah, yes, from the 4D, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, then it will be interested to compare with the D6 directly. Mm -hmm. So... So that's what is interesting is that we have pentachorons, heptachorons, and octachorons. So we have also in E8 uh, some simplex of uh, higher dimension, which are pro projected to, D4, to 4D. Then trying to do physics with this, the idea is that when we have a, a, f a space filled with a golden tetrahedron or golden simplices, uh, at the level of the faces, I have uh, four spins corresponding to the four geometry of the faces. Spin zero, spin one, spin two, and spin three with uh, growing uh, surfaces. Then it's natural to use quantum spin uh, from SU2-3. So this is the work we begin uh, several so months from the growing with Marcello. So by, by vol you mean by the area? By the shape, the, the shape of the triangles. Oh. Or the length. The because I explained that, in, in fact, the surface in loop quantum gravity are traversed by uh, flux, which are the spins. And uh, if, you have, uh, if the spin is higher, you have two flux. It's a, two flux, a flux perpendicular to the... And, uh, but if you use this quantum group, uh, it's limited to three. Three is a spin uh, three three half because each fluxus here, which is a part of a, a loop, in fact, it's a, you put loop in, inside of your uh, complex of simplices, and then uh, each is representing a spin one half, and if you have several loops inside of the same face, the spin add, and normally it goes until infinity. But if you work with quantum spin. And with this one, which is linked to Fibonacci anion, it only goes to three. So it's good because it perfectly matches with the yeah, but how, number of faces is, that we have. How is the first one? Oh, you mean the number of golden edges connected to the number of the spin? Because I can't connect it to why the first one is zero and the second one is one. Yes, this is a number of golden edges. Oh, okay. Yes, okay. of the face. And then we have a condition for loop quantum gravity, klebsch gordan condition, which is automatically uh, satisfied if we use loops here. Uh, and the intertwiner will be the tetrahedron, uh, where you can have, uh, depending on the kind Nine of tetrahedron, you will have a together. number of entry and a number of out, which mm -hmm. are corresponding. And, but inside, you can intertwine. You can go one flux entering from one face is going out in another face or in another. Then in the intertwiner, you can encode braiding. In fact, it's in the, in the golden tetrahedron. But it also works where the golden tetrahedron are faces of uh, golden uh, five simple pentachoron in, uh, in 4D. It can work for spin phone or for spin network. Can you go back? Yes. Oops. So, yeah, so the third, the third triangle, that's, that's one of the two, that's half of one of the two prototiles in the Penrose tiling. Oh, yes, right, yes, um, yes. And mm -hmm. this second one is half of the other prototile in the Penrose tiling, except that it's scaled down, down by one power of the golden ratio from the third one. Mm -hmm. Yes, you take this one and the symmetry. Right? And in the QS you add the first one and the second one together, doesn't it give the... Oh, probably right. not. And then, and then, of course, since those are Penrose tiling related, it's nice to know that the QSN, every all of the fundamental planes in the QSN have as a subset of their points the Penrose tiling. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, right. If you take a plane, then 
and maybe you can look at some uh, uh, braiding Fibonacci oh. onion in 2D also because and, of, with and these faces. we have those two shapes on ev on the planes as well the the the, the, regu the, uh, the, the regular triangles also, also? in the planes oh. in the QSN in certain planes in the QSN so we have oh, yes, all, four QSN, of yes. all four of those but shapes but not in the plane or styling yes no that's what makes the mm. QSN so interesting. It's a combination of crystallographic and non-crystallographic mm. structure in one yes. object. So it's pretty finished, not totally. Just this idea for the code theoretic choice and amplitude is when you decompose a higher simplex, you have several ways of decomposing it. So this one, for example, the 10, 5, you have to select one of the, f one of the five uh, vertex to decompose into these two, the uh, tetralon and the pentacoron. Uh, and, uh, and, one ch and, and the other, in fact, if you remove the, the top of the pyramid, this is not interesting because uh, then you get something which is flat. Uh, it's a zero. So you have 10, put ten choice implemented by this simplex because it's five times the number of choice when you have to transform this into tetrahedron. This the seven three could be decomposed into two tetrahedron in four different ways. So four times five gives twenty for this one. When you have this simplex, you have twenty choice to finally go to golden tetrahedron and this 24 choice and this also. So this has a degree of freedom in the, in the quasi-crystal just by using different possible decomposition of the higher dimensional simplex. So Ray, you guys, so everybody here except for you has read this paper about how simplex integers, each simplex integer encodes the full set theoretic combinatorics for that integer. So when we're projecting E8 and dealing with the QSN, we have these transformed representations of eight simplices, seven simplices, six, five, four, and so on. And so in the QSN, therefore, like topologically rearranged, but the connections would still be there, we have the full set theoretic combinatorics of each of each of the simplices that are projected. In other words, just pick pick a a four simplex, right, mm -hmm. that gets sent down from E8 to the Elser Sloan. You can recover that four simplex if you know how to find it, and then you can recover in its graph connections the full set theoretic combinatorics yes, embedded within it. Yes, this is where, what we are doing. Yes. Right, right. So I was just it's all new to me to think about how set theory would ever correspond to our program in the QSN, but at least I know that the set theoretic information on this span of numbers, this, the simplices, you know, zero to, um, to the eight simplex, to the seven simplex, which were all represented under projective transformation in the QSN and in the space filling subspace of the QSN. So this is a kind of theorem saying that because you have higher dimensional simplex emerging, it gives you degree of freedom to encode the code theoretic inside of the same uh, uh, the same quasi crystal, a quasi crystal with the same vertices will give different possible tiling uh, thanks to the higher dimensional uh, simplices. So maybe somehow our code, which we don't know. So Marnie, we we are trying to discover a code. So we have this object. We know it's very powerful, and honestly, we don't know a lot about the mathematics of it compared to what there is to be understood. But it's full of set theoretic and group theoretic information, and all from this e largest exceptional Lie algebra and its associated lattice. So somehow this code, which we don't know what it is, it is probably deeply going to relate to set theory. Yes. And, and clearly group theory. But now I can see it. Now I can kind of understand also, the yes, relation to set theory. theory. Re really, thanks to the simplex, and I believe that uh, we could express a, a lot of properties of this object with category theory and right. uh, uh, 
that's why I wanted to, to show the link. Then I have just an one slide on eigenvalue okay. in less than yeah. five minutes. Sure. Good stuff. So, so this is uh, A, B equals P table. So mainly the table was done by Marcello, and I add some reference. And then I add uh, the eigenvalue of these matrices. So A4 nice. is A5. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the eigenvalue of the Lie group carton matrix here. And here of the affine group carton matrix when you add a point. So when you add a point to A4, which is just four points, you close this as a, as a pentagon. And it gives this um, matrix. In fact, you just add this. But on the next slide, I will detail more this eigenvalue. So here you have E8, and here H4. And then you and have your Coxeter Dinkin folding, non crystallographic folding. Here, matrix. yes. The folding between E8 and H4, and in fact, the H4 perpendicular is there. So this is the carton matrix. But you can see that this submatrix is here, except that you remove, you, you change the minus one here by minus uh, phi. And this one gives a perpendicular by replacing the zero here by minus uh, small phi, which is one over phi, in fact. And uh, the eigenvalue, it's interesting because the eigenvalue of E8 are directly folded into the eigenvalue of this matrix from H4 and this from H4 perpendicular. I just take the first eigenvalue here, the second goes there, uh, and uh, it's folded, the eigenvalue. Yeah, this is really nice. You guys did a good teamwork on this. This is awesome. So one of the things I'm going to be wanting to understand with your help is, um, is A4 good enough? for our purposes. A4 is a mm. subset, it's a subspace of E8, but it's not the richest four-dimensional subspace of E8. That would, no. be, that would be D4, would yes. be the richest. Right. And, and so if we need the, uh, if we, so I guess I'd have to go to Fong and ask Fong, look Fong, are all the angles in, your, in our hypervector contained in A4? If so, A4 is good enough, but if we need the, if we need to go to D4 to get all the hypervector components, then we would change this to using D4 as our A, as our A coefficient um, space. So, and here we can see that uh, from A4, A4 is the source for phi, for the golden ratio. In fact, phi, as I demonstrated, is already encoded in E8. Here, when you go to the uh, the affine carton matrix, this is what is in the book, then you get phi as the eigenvalue. But if you look how this matrix is built, this submatrix here is the submatrix of the, aff of the affine carton matrix of A4, which is also the matrix of A4. So this is A4. And in fact, I say that the phi here comes from this part, from the A4. And uh, uh, you can see this also uh, because A4 has already phi in the eigenvalue. A4 is SU5, is a group, a very interesting group for uh, uh, great unification. But can you modify your statement because you say A4 is the source, but. Yes, it, A4 it, is the source. Okay, but, for phi. Al but also D4 has. No. Ha no, D4 in the Carton matrix, D4 has no phi. I, in it. I, I can't. I don't remember, I, but it's I can't, not interesting. I, I would like to challenge you on that. Um, I, 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 I really like D4. <laughs> <laughs> this is a group of the 24th. No, I, 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 I but I, I have D4 not seen five the there. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it, it, it cannot be. The, D, the D4 but being more. What I like about A4 is it's the. Hold on, hold on. Why, yeah. why is the two sets of the other, right? A4 and D4? That's yeah. right. Sorry? Why is it two sets of the other? Right, D4 is two, I believe D4 is two A4s. Is oh, no, 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 no. A4 one is simpler. It's the sim No, it's quite different. It's not the same angle, yes. 
Right. The Dinkin diagram are very different. They are four in line or yeah, four we got in a, a triangle. Is it like a E8 is two sets of uh, that? Uh, yes, E8 eight has two D4 in it. E8, you can cut it into D4 and also into A4. I remember not just for that. There, there are, there is, there is A, D, E. You know, all these uh, in different dimensions, they are different. But sometimes you can. I think it's in six D. Like also, uh, oh no, it's uh, it's. I thought it's a four D actually because uh, Tony used it, uh, like four dimensional diamond lattice. Mm -hmm. um, right, he uses D four. Well, he uses diamond lattice. So yeah, but I think he uses D four. D four is a hyper diamond, hyper yeah, checkerboard. That's Tony's so hyper diamond, sets of, right? hyper Feynman checkerboard. He uses D four. That is two sets of another lattice. If it's not A four, then what is it? Well, it yes, D four. Yes, could be Z, you can make D four by two set of A four. Yeah, like see, that's what I'm talking about. By superposing two lattices, yeah. but not with the uh, Lie algebra and the ca Dinkin diagram and the Carton matrices. Just That's geometrically, yes. Like uh, I can match E8 inside of Z8. I made right. this two. But what, but I'm, what I'm saying is, if you c um, D4 and A4 geometrically are composed of simplices. For example, you could build D4 or A4 out of regular tetrahedra, rotate. You know, allowing them to be rotated. And then the relationship between the regular tetrahedra in both adjacent ones in both A4 and D4 oh. must have the same you, yeah. no, no, angle. No, 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 no. You could it right no, 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 it's not D4. Sorry, D4 is not 2 A4. D4 is 2 Z4. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Z4. Yes. The D is 2 square lattice. So, but, but from the hexagonal lattice, is more complicated can, to do. Can we agree on a follow up on this, which is. I need a better proof than just your statement. I, I want to make sure we're on the same page that the mm -hmm. geometric, okay, not the algebraic, but the geometric uh, D4 also has these golden ratio values in it. You're I'm quite sure that not. Okay, but, uh, what's the root, I can what's the root polytope of the A4? Carton matrix. What's the root, uh, root polytope of D4? A4? It's the 24 cell. No, A4. A4. A4 is uh, this. Uh, the root polytope. Oh, it's a 20 dimensional. Uh, there is 20 vectors, 20 root 20 vectors. Vertices. In the form, yeah. 20 okay. vertices. 20 vertices. And I, I, I published, uh, I, I sent you a paper on uh, linking A4 and D4. I can build D4 with three A4. Mm. Oh, remember? really? Because that's interesting because you can build E8 with as the union of three copies of A8. Three. So e, E8 is the union of three copies of A8. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't know that you could generate D4 by three copies of A4. A4, yes, and rotation. But then I will have some vertices which, uh, that I have to remove. I have too okay. much stuff, but I can cover all the D4 lattice by three copies of the A4 lattice. Okay, so Fong and Ray, so what I want is I just want to know, I, want, I, want, I just want to know where the full set of root vectors are, if you can get all, uh, I'm sorry, of the hyper vectors that are in the A, Coefficient. So if you can get all the hypervector values from A4, that's that's the optimal thing because that doesn't matter what I think about D4. That's the simplest. La that's the simplest, you know, lattice that would have those those hypervectors. But but if you can't get it all from A4, then we'll go back to my suspicion that the golden ratio values geometrically are also in D4. Oh, this is my last slide, so for you, me it's you, finished, it's just a discussion. But you, you see the motivation, Ray? Because I'm looking... Oh, my AB yes, but I know that they are not in... Well, but you have to... Phi is you, not in the eigenvalue of... That's D4. fine, but you just have to understand whether or not all of the hypervector values mm -hmm. are contained in A4. It's because that's the idea of this AB equals P solution, where, where you've got this sub-lattice and sub-algebra in the four-dimensional space acting upon the primary root vector algebra of the of the E8 lattice and algebra, and so I I want all those hypervector components to be an A4 because then it's good. Then we're it's an A4 here, yes, but not a D4. Well, it's an A4, yes. Well, no. D what I've said, Ray, is the hypervector, mm -hmm. yes. okay, which which transforms a slice of E8 to your H3 symmetries in two, three, and four dimensions. That same hypervector 
I want to know, can you get all of the components, the individual angles that composite to the hypervector, if you can pluck them all out of A4, that's mm. what I want to hear. I, that's what I hope is the yes, case. Because I believe it should be A4. Well, if we define exactly vector of what? Uh, yeah, Fon, well, Fong can give you that. true that I mean, they come from A4, the golden ratio in E8 comes from A4 because uh, you have this. Yeah. It's already in A4, I, so it's already in the four-dimensional simplex. It's the yeah. angle, the diagonal angle of yeah. the four-dimensional simplex yeah. encodes exactly. the golden ratio in this matrix, which is here. That's why here, for just the eigenvalue of E8, you have some phi right. just at the first line, and the other so are not phi. But if you add yeah. to the E8 lattice, right. then everything becomes phi. But wait, do you understand that Pentacora are the four dimensional simplices are yes. also in D4 lattice. So what I'm saying is it 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 is yes. there. Absolutely. I oh, just yeah, right. there, all there, I want to yes. know is are mm -hmm. all the hypervector components in A4? If so, I want A4 because that's the simpler lattice than D4. Yes. And that's more elegant. But if we ha if we can't find all of them in A4, then we want to look and see, well, are they all in D4? Yes, geometrically the air in the, as a sub lattice, but I believe that I checked that it, it was not in the carton matrix of D4, but I, I will check again. Okay. Uh, okay. It could be there. Yeah, this is <laughs> awesome. This is very exciting, especially the last part. <laughs> yeah.